I'm eating the burger. I'm thinking, okay, th- this tastes not homemade. This tastes like, you know, a frozen beef burger that would have flour mm-hmm. and ground onion into it. And I'm eating, I'm thinking, no, they, they've said it's homemade, so I'm going to keep eating it. And within 20 minutes, I had to excuse myself and, and run to the bathroom. And all that night, I had like really bad gas. And then the next morning I woke up and I looked, I looked nine months pregnant. My belly was like out here. And you're, you know, back on the normal bodybuilding regime, excluding the bread and the, you know, back yeah, yeah, food. literally just, just back to uh, a rice based diet. Like I, I was going to say when we were on holiday, it was just a minefield, like being a celiac in a foreign country, and let alone a language barrier. So you're trying to explain in French, like my French isn't as good as it used to be, but you're trying to explain to them that you have this allergy to wheat let alone saying celiac and they're like going an allergy to wheat and they're, it just it came to the point where i just gave up <laughs> most nights and it was just like just steak and chips and then right even then i got to see how sensitive you become when you are celiac because i could tell when say chips were fried in the same oil as like chicken nuggets or sort of battered food yeah. that mm. you, you've seen this cross contamination and i mean when when I learned of being celiac, I said to Morgan, oh, I don't want to be one of these people that were out for food. And we're like, did that touch a bit of gluten? Oh, I have to be really strict. That I didn't want to turn into one of these anal people of like <laughs> being so you're, paranoid. You're finally, you're finally retired from bodybuilding, but you're still bringing your fucking Tupperware with you because you know you have celiac disease. What do you have there, sir? Chicken, rice, and broccoli, sir. <laughs> oh, that would and be that's horrible, sort of huh? like... When when it came to most nights, I was just like to Morgan, this is just roulette. Like, let's just pray that tomorrow morning that my bowel is good. Because I could tell my bowel function would be perfect. Now, all of a sudden, you'd have like a loose stool the next morning and you'd know, okay, well, there was gluten in that meal. Not a lot, but enough to tell your immune system, do a bit of intestinal damage. Mm-hmm. And um, right. then we went, we had a family meal and we were trying to explain to them, you know, how serious this allergy was and i'm eating the food they prepared burgers and they prepared chicken and i'm I'm eating the burger i'm thinking okay this tastes not homemade this tastes like you know a frozen beef burger that would have flour Mm -hmm. and ground onion into it and i'm eating i'm thinking no they've said it's homemade so i'm gonna keep eating it and within 20 minutes i had to excuse myself and and run to the bathroom and all that night i had like really bad gas and then the next morning i woke up and i looked i looked nine months pregnant my belly was like out here and um my parents obviously were in hollywood my parents my parents looked at me and said jesus this is serious i'm like going you you don't think so (laughs) (laughs) so your wife was pregnant it was less uh, yeah (laughs) (laughs) But I mean, it felt like sandpaper was rubbing on my guts. And then this fatigue mm. came over me where I, I literally slept for 16 hours straight. We uh we went out to this nature park that like Sunday morning. I managed to walk around the nature park with the boys trying to keep, you know, happy. And as soon as we got back to our apartment, straight to bed, I literally slept from like three o'clock till eight o'clock the next morning. Wow. And it's just that's crazy. This this fatigue where your body's just like, you need to go to sleep. There's something seriously wrong. (laughs) Yeah, I'm sure. It's just preventing you from either more of that kind of stuff, you know? So yeah, at least have some time to kind of pass it along. And and how how long did it take you to kind of get over that, that episode? So I would say it was Sunday, slept all the way till Monday. And then I fasted, just water fasted all day Monday Mm. until about uh, half eight Monday evening when we went for dinner. And then I just had something Mm. small at dinner time. But in result of that, it left me like lactose intolerant because then two days later we went and we got ice cream with the boys and my gut was turned inside out. So obviously mm-hmm. with celiac, your your gut is basically eating itself. It's your immune system is attacking the gut. Mm-hmm. Obviously, that sort of the the sort of soft villi structures in your small intestine are where lactase gets secreted and they're like the right. first mm-hmm. the first cells to get damaged or 
mowed away by your immune system. So the lactose intolerance has sort of only started to resolve itself now, which is what, maybe five weeks, six weeks after. Um, That's a long time. So really shows you like with that intestinal damage, what, what ends up happening to that immune function and obviously your digestive function with it. Yeah, and it's catching it early on. I mean, you know how many people walk around with this undiagnosed and have no idea and they, they don't do an elimination diet or address it and they, they have all kinds of serious issues and then they have to do a, a carnivore diet <laughs> to fix it, which is basically, you know, the, the biggest elimination diet you can do, which you can only eat animal meat-based sources, right, and exclude everything else, including the processed stuff. And that's how they fix themselves. Did you did you do some oral BPC-157 to kind of, you know, bring yeah, some that, calmness to your intestinal tract? And, that, as soon know? as we got back, I introduced that. And then I introduced what I said to you, the lorazotide. So right. I, mm -hmm. I was... Uh, I was at the, the health optimization summit, that biohacking summit in, right. in London mm -hmm. and, and a follower, um, apologies, I can't remember. I'm really bad with names, but he, he came to me and said, oh, have you heard about lorazotide? I was like, no. And he said, oh, well, my, my dad celiac and we've trialed this in him, you know, have a Google of, you know, PubMed studies on lorazotide. Mm -hmm. And when you, when you research into it, they, they gave celiac patients either 250 milligrams, 500 milligrams, or one gram over like a six week period, and then measured the levels of zonulin. So obviously looking at how tight the um, intestinal barrier was and looking mm -hmm. for the levels obviously to decrease to make sure that the junctions were tightening again. And they seen huge results in that like 250 to 500 milligram dose right. region. So I've been taking that the last, two weeks at 250 milligrams twice a day. And I have mm -hmm. to say, I've noticed quite a lot of um, improvements to the digestive function, but also to the sort of inflammation around my gut. So there's less right. water mm -hmm. retention, it, mm -hmm. the sort of visualism much more improved. So right now I'm taking 500 micrograms of BPC-157, the 250 milligrams of lorazotide twice a day. And then I have KPV in, if you've ever read about KPV. No, no, so K us, K please. K KPV is a, a tripeptide, but has really strong antimicrobial and antifungal properties. So it's really useful if you potentially have candida overgrowth. Is um, it, it, this sounds like, um, <laughs> what did PT77? No, there was another peptide who has very similar properties. It could actually be the same thing, but a different abbreviation. Um, I have it in one of my intestinal health videos. It just the abbreviation eludes me. KPV. It's probably the same thing. It's like an, something that you would secrete endogenously, but it goes yeah, systemic, right? But if you take, yeah, if you take it orally uh, or injectable version, it actually kind of resets your gut microbiome, but only keeps the good. Bio. Yeah, yeah, it's probably the same stuff. exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and it helps obviously with butyrate production. And so I've I've right. put that mm. in. Um, very hard to say what great effect it's had just yet, but I mean, considering the amount of damage that's probably been there from years of abuse, any sort of small mm. help is going to help. Um, yeah, and we're, when we're talking about abuse, we're talking about pizza and, and, and bread, not about yeah. oral steroids, right? <laughs> and everybody's like, yeah, I knew he was on yeah. 50 milligrams and a job per day. That's why his gut is messed up. Right, but that's that's the common story with most bodybuilders. They just take copious amounts of Anadrol their entire off season, including very famous Mr. Olympias. Um, and then they wreck, they wreck their intestinal health, you know, and they need to go undergo all kinds of treatments to kind of I fix that. I I delved into on our SN education where I like biochemistry of trying to figure out what was the mechanism of orals ruining your appetite and mm -hmm. ruining um obviously intestinal health. And you actually start to see that it's got to do with how your your bile acids interact with like your CCKY and your ghrelin in mm -hmm. in your intestine. So one of the like easiest things you can probably do to offset some of that appetite destruction with orals is optimizing bile flow with Todka right. and then Todka, optimizing right. fatty acid transport across your liver. So choline and inositol, the, the right. sort of the, the theory behind the liver stack that I made. 
Right. But when you, when and you it's good to run at, year round anyway, because it, of course yeah. it helps with tremendously with liver health. Yes. And uh, did you ever add in the, the ox bile to help with uh, the breakdown? That's of, what's you in, know? That's what's in liver right. stack. Yeah. yeah. Okay, good. good. So, good, so you sort of you start to see obviously that when you have these appetite issues or orals, it probably stems back to your bile flow potentially being mm. so sluggish and fatty acids not being able to feed directly into the the duodenum, and then obviously you have right. these. Um, appetite regulatory hormones like CCKY and ghrelin and whatever else mm. being inhibited because of that lack of bile flow. So obviously your your intestine is looking for that drip feed of bile down into it and mm. it's not receiving it. It's going to tell your brain, slow everything down. Right, right. And then the fact that your intestinal lighting also has androgen receptors, right? The, the, just the outside of your, of course, so this hypertrophy is now the normal contractile capacity of your um you know intestinal tract is altered right you get yeah. more forceful contractions but also it's more difficult to absorb these nutrients because these little fingers that are in your intestinal tract right where the nutrients kind of pass into the uh, central circulation that i think gets impaired as well and then you have yeah. aromatized enzymes and 17 hydroxysteroid dehydrogenase enzymes within the intestinal tract so whatever you take orally gets now converted into we these weird metabolites who haven't really been investigated so you're yeah that's why i think nowadays we either do sublingual or uh, just don't take orals anymore 